All right. Okay. So we are back with functioning internet, and we are going to pick up just where we left off. Uh, let's do some cleanup here. So our boy Amiop, um, last last thing we tried to do was bind their token to them, uh, which seemingly worked. Uh, you know, we got them on there, so let's see. Pulling them out. Bada bing. We got our boy Amiop. So, I think Amiop needs a bit of a dungeon to run around in. So, let's see. If we can find in my files a map to use for some terrain. Because I tried to upload it, but, uh, nah. Didn't, didn't seem to work at all. So, let's go into my files. Deep into my files, where we will find a map that I was going to use. Because I had a specific one I want to pull up. Make sure it had plenty of walls and whatnot. There it is. Alright. So, one thing I should have done, and it's not really that big a deal. Um, it didn't load, what the hell. Uh, is, well, let's actually, let's do it. Uh, switch over to map layer when you're going to, like, bring in an image that's a map, just because, you know. Um, it's one of those small little things, just because that way you don't have to, uh, you don't have to um, worry too much about, like, sending it to the right layer afterwards. Except, roll 20 doesn't want to accept, oh, there it is. It is being slow. Okay. Okay. Let's hope it doesn't do it a second time. Um, yeah, see, you gotta be patient with the roll 20. Uh, looks like this map... Oh, not quite. Okay. Almost, almost the right size, but not quite. So, I know these, these tiles are 15 by 15, um, squares. Which, I think I just... I think I just did that without even thinking about it. So, uh, let's go into some stuff here. Let's turn dynamic lighting on. It's important. Um, geez. Okay. I said, I said turn it on. Okay. All right. Um, there's explorer mode. I don't really mess with it, uh, cause it can get, I feel like it could get confusing. Uh, daylight mode just makes it so walls still matter, but you don't have to worry about placing light sources or anything. Uh, and then there's also update when token drop. So this way players can't kind of cheat, I guess, by um, dragging their token around to like look through walls and stuff like that. Um, and it will only update their vision when they drop the token. Um, I'm going to probably start doing this just in general as like I'm always going to have this on because I feel like it does incentivize moving one square at a time. And I think that can uh, that can be more beneficial for everybody overall. You can increase the tension of the game for all parties uh, when, you know, you gotta kind of move a step at a time. Um, and in case there's, like... It, it makes it easier to have, like, traps and stuff like that than, like... You know, having somebody just be like, I'm going to move... Oh, oopsie. Oh, yeah. What did we say about map layers? But just having somebody um, just like, oh, yeah, I'm going to run, or I'm going to do my full movement, uh, and there's, like, a trap right here that you wanted to spring on them. Um, and it, it's always just kind of awkward when they're like, oh, I'm going to run this way. Oh, there's a trap here. Go, move back and see. Uh. Um... But at the same time, I would argue that you could uh, then tell your player, well, you were rushing ahead, so you're definitely getting caught by this trap. But that's that's a, that's a run-in-the-game type of question. So uh, let's go ahead and rename this uh, Tea Room. I don't, I don't know. <clears throat> this is going to go with like some of the other maps and whatnot later, because... I mean, this whole thing is my crazy roguelike zone, so I have all these pre-made zones, 
uh, that I can throw enemies into and everything, different chambers and whatnot. But anyway, so now we got dynamic lighting turned on for this. So let's go to the dynamic lighting layer. This one right here. This is a fancy old layer. <laughs> uh, fa fan I wanted to say handy dandy, um, but like I was on fancy, but anyway. So for setting up walls, uh, probably the best way to do it if the map, like this one, uh, makes it easy for you, where all these walls are perfectly in line with the grid for the most part, there's some small ones here, but um, for stuff like this, uh, it's best to do like the snap to grid thing. So you hold down shift and it'll just follow, follow that grid, baby. So now that completed a complete square, or rectangle, whatever you want to call it, quadrilateral. <laughs> um, now uh, there are shadows. Uh, because of the vision of Amiop over here. So let's just go ahead and make some more walls. All the more simple walls that we can make. Um, for ones that like are at the edges, it's definitely, I feel, best to do it this way. Because if you try to click from the edge, it you don't always get it to be um, right at the edge. So you can have like tiny little, tiny little gaps and stuff that can just... Make things a little wonky, so let's add some more wall here. Wall it up, baby. And let's add a little more. Let's do this freehand style. And then you all, you always right click when you're done, unless you complete like a full circuit. So if you want to just make like a single line from there to there, right click and then it'll complete it for you. Um, there's also freehand, which is a little weird. Um, but it seems like I'm also not super steady with these curves here. Um, that's one way you can handle curves is by freehanding it. It kind of updates, like, as you draw rather than having to, like, right click to, like, finalize it. But it's just because of how the, the polygon tool works. So let's finish up these walls here. Make that one. And, oops, boom, 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 boom. All right, so we got our straight walls all set up. Oh, not quite all set up. So got, oops, so got this one, and bam, ba bam. All right, so that's all the proper walls. There's also uh, the draw shape tool. So you want to hold Alt to make a circle. Um, I've noticed this can be kind of finicky sometimes too. Uh, but generally, as long as you make the circle big enough to, you know, be a, a proper circle, um, it's it's good for pillars. It looks cool too when you actually have someone like like this is why I like using the dynamic lighting and everything. Um, so you can uh, tell that. It updates on drop. I'll actually turn that off so you can see the difference. Um, I usually left it off before just because it was easier for me to make sure that everything was right to test all the corners to make sure there's no no weird areas where uh, something's off or they can see through a wall or something like that. Um, but for now, we'll go back and we're gonna turn that little feature back on okay so we got we got our boy amy up here uh and we got some walls let's go and f let's finish up these these pillars too while we're at it oops make sure you click on the thing it's easy when you're switching between layers to forget to go back to the right tool happens all the time all right let's do with these pillars shit screw that one up Hiya. whoop All right. Making circles. Yeah. Cool. So, now that we got all of our obstacles up, we'll say, um, let's go ahead and, because our boy has dark vision, 
they're able to see pretty well. Um, however, I like to, you can use this thing to kind of search up some stuff, so let's find a flame. Okay, you know, a lot of these are a little whack, so, oh, this, this will work. So you got a little flame here, put it in your bowl, alright? But you want to make this a light source, go into here, bright light, most torches, fire, uh, it's usually 20 and 20, uh, I think the spell light is a 20 and 20, uh, you can reduce that, increase that to your liking, uh, as long as you stay consistent when you figure out, like, what sources will provide what, um, I guess these are supposed to be, like, basins or something, got water on them, but, like, whatever's magic. So I know this is a light source. So any, uh, visually impaired in the darkness types, uh, they can actually see because of the light here. Um, but you can also, of course, this is just a, a token, it's its own thing, it's not any entity or anything, it doesn't need to be. Um, but you can still, like, oh, I'm gonna copy this, paste it here, you know, get a bunch of fires all over. Um, so that's how you can do light sources, but you can also apply that, of course, to a token that, uh, would actually get saved to something. So let's give it vision uh, and have it, because it's on fire, I uh, will also have it emit a similar amount of light. Um, not that, that that's, that's not similar at all. Uh, I'm going to turn that down for no reason. And now this creature emits light of its own. Crazy. All right. But. We didn't link this Banshee up, and that's just as, as anything would be before. You know, you got your HP, uh, set it to, set it to equal your biz, um, turn all this stuff on, all that. Uh, there's also these auras that you can use in case it has, like, a constant AoE or something. Uh, in the case of this, like, it does have the burning body, burning body? Heated body. Heated body ability that I gave it. Um, which is just anything within five feet. So if you really want, you could have a little AoE just to remind yourself of, uh, the ability, or if there would be some sort of effect that you feel the creature would get, give off that would be very noticeable, uh, then you want to definitely turn that on so the players can see it. Be aware of it. Um, so that's our Flaming Banshee. Um... We look at our Fertina Angel. Let's take a look at them. Uh, so, yeah, they still got a lot of stuff that needed to be fixed. Um, and it looks like it's still being finicky, which, you know, it, it tends to. Um, that's something I feel like I've noticed. The uh, creatures out of the compendium, I feel, are more finicky than the ones that you make yourself. Uh, like, like Amiap, for example. Um, I don't feel like I had too many problems editing this, or editing the, the Banshee for that matter, um, but that's just something that kind of comes with the territory. Uh, another thing, you could use resources for spell slots if you really want to, just so you can kind of link them to have, like, you know, use this fifth bar here, but that's mostly only good for classes like a Warlock, where they only have one spell slot, like, level. So it's, it's just kind of a single value, where for most casters, uh, you know, there's the several different spell slots and spells. So um, another thing that is a absolute lifesaver, and it's kind of why I made Amiapa a caster at all of any kind, was is, it's the fact that they also have spells here, and Hunter's, Hunter, okay, Hunter's Mark. Man, I thought I was getting dyslexic for a second there. Um, but like a lot of like weapons and everything, you can just drag and drop onto here. Uh, some spells are a little wonky in that they don't necessarily work how you would want them to. Uh, I'm hoping that eventually Roll20 does something with reworking the spells that are on the site uh, for stuff like Hunter's Mark to, when you put that in, instead of giving you an attack here, um, to give you a global damage modifier, because that's what it actually is. 
Uh, you can just as easily just click this. Oh, you know, it's it's the Hunter's Mark's uh, damage. Oh, this is new. Show spells description. Oh, wow. Huh. <laughs> I swear, like, every week there is something I either didn't notice before or something that is entirely new. Um, but that's cool. That's neat. So, honestly, uh, any spell that is a damaging spell, seeing this now... I almost feel like attacks should, like, attack roll should be the default. Like, um, for some reason, Fireball and I believe Lightning Bolts are both like this on here. Um, okay. Didn't drag that very well. My mouse does not like to drag things. So we got Fireball in here. Uh, by default? Oh. Oh, okay, no. They did change it. All right. Unless Lightning Bolt was the only one that was like that. This guy cannot cast these spells, he is a ranger. But we're just we're just testing some stuff out. We're just we're just screwing around. Just cause I want to show some of the uh the weird quirks. Yeah, so this one Yeah, that there you go. Really weird. Um they're both very similar functioning spells. They're just your classic eight D six AoE spell of choice. Uh, for anybody of a class that can cast these. Um, so, we gotta, we, we, we wanna change this, not spell, the output to attack. Uh, because it deals damage, it's not a ranged attack, it's just an attack. Now, 8d6, lightning, um, saving throw is dexterity, uh, include spell description, uh, off, I think. So let's see this now. We cast our lightning bolt. All right, cool. Yeah. So, like I was, what, like I was gonna say, uh, it seems like turn the description off, unless it is like a spell that's basically all description, uh, like a like a hold person or like anything that's just an effect or or summoning something, whatever. Uh, but anything that is a damage dealing spell, it seems like it's best to just. For simplicity's sake, streamline's sake, these are just the numbers that you need to look at when the spell is being cast, instead of having to read through... Oh. Instead of having to read through all this just to get this, you know? Uh, it's a lot easier to just click on that, bada-bang, it's the damage. Um, so let's say for Fireball. Alright. Never mind. Oh, wait, no, I didn't, yeah, okay, so, yeah, there you go, so that one worked, um, so you just need, you just need the damage, things in the AoE need to make a deck save, um, <clears throat> the radius of the AoE and everything, that's a specific that you can check out when you click on the description, or something that the spellcaster should probably know <laughs> when they're casting the spell, uh, but, I've been guilty of giving my players too much credit sometimes, if you can believe it. Um, so let's see what we need to fix about Lightning Bolts to make it cast uh, the same way that Fireball does. Because when we clicked on the description here, um, it got a little freaked up. So let's see what's going on here. So we compared it to Fireball. Uh, everything seems to be pretty much the same. Duration spell, spell attack... Spell attack none. Yeah, output attack, all that stuff. Spell, output attack, spell attack none. You got your 86 lightning damage. Uh, dex effects, effects, half damage. We didn't put this in, but that shouldn't matter a whole lot. Higher level cast. Oh, this might be it. Because we had something in here that was, I think, telling it that it can be cast at a higher level. Uh, but not giving it a value. Because sometimes weird things like that can kind of freak it out a little. Um, so let's see if that's what it was. We'll close Fireball. Close that. Close that. Let's try our friend Lightning Bolt again. Yeah, there we go. So it still has to input a value. That's our Lightning Bolt. And it's still eating the Matrix when... Um, <laughs> Trying to show the description. I don't know what's up with that. 
Interesting. Instantaneous spell, spell attack. Huh. Well. Anyway. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so, uh, let's go back to our 14 angel. Um, let's see if we can edit any of this. Uh, we can't. Okay, cool. Um, well, I guess all I really wanted to show was, I guess, in theory, uh, mostly that, um, angelic weapons for the purpose of this, uh, Fertina angel, this angel of, of storms, um, you could just take this, make it lightning damage, uh, still deals the same numbers, as far as your party's concerned, um, the damage resistances, it's a lot more, uh, common, I guess, technically speaking, it's more common to be resistant to lightning than it would be for radiant, uh, so, just the fact that Radiant is a seldom resisted type, uh, you could argue that, you know, this would be better for the Angel. Um, however, a lot of the things I would want to do to this, the spells I would want to switch out, uh, because, like, Raise Dead doesn't really, like, that is a very just typical bring somebody back to life type ability of, like, restorative magic, uh, with, like, their healing touch and stuff. That just goes along with, like, your general angel. Um, but I would at least give them, like, oh, you know what? No raise dead? Give them, I don't know, just, just a lightning bolt or a storm sphere, probably, given their challenge rating, the fact that they have access to two fifth level spells, although they are mostly for, I suppose, flavor, um, I guess in a lot of campaigns, maybe you're not going to be fighting a dev all the time, uh, which is weird to me. Um, you know, I see a monster in the manual and I think of it as something to be fought at some point. Um, but yeah, so we can see Amiop is working as intended with their vision. This thing's a light source. It's on fire. It can yell. Um, but let's go to Amiop, and let's see some of, some of what's missing on his character sheet. Because, uh, you know, of course there's a lot, and there is what we were going off of before, with 5e tools, um, you can put all these things in, and it just is a lifesaver to be able to just copy-paste these things, instead of having to type them all yourself, even if, like, you have other things to like look off of and, and type off of, um, literally copying pasting is such a time saver that like, it might seem like it's obvious. It might seem like it's a small thing, but it, it does save a lot of time. Um, but mostly I think what I wanted to do was go over to look at my plethora of examples of all manner of different classes and characters that have their different resources associated. So you got all of your uh, sorcerers, they have their sorcery points. Uh, these are all six level characters. So your sorcerers, they got six sorcery points, lower level, whatever. Your warlocks, uh, they have their spell slots. The 0 50 here is uh, an extra mechanic that uh, another DM that uh, I play with, I guess during my group as well, um, they kind of came up with a mechanic that fixes Warlock in sessions or campaigns where you're not always going to be um, following the, like, several short rests a day type structure. Like, there might really only be one set-piece battle that would be happening in the day. And Warlock's all about the short rests and getting everything back on short rest. Um, so it kind of works around that in a way. And I've also found that, um, you build it by dealing damage with your spells or like warlock abilities. Um, and we've found that generally it didn't seem like warlocks were getting their spell slots back too quickly. Um, and so this, this number is kind of tentative 
at the very least it works for this setting, which is what matters, but I digress. Um, yeah, so we got also, like, you know, our favorite foe things, 3 of 3, equal to the proficiency. Um, <clears throat> our monks, they got their key points. We got our rages on our barbarians here. Um, all those sorts of things. Lay on hand for paladins, like... All these class resources that are very frequently used, that come up a lot, that are valuable information for everybody, uh, I very much like having these bars, um, at least for the player. At the very least for the player. Uh, because, like, you can also say this character, let's open them up. If you really wanted to, you could turn these off, the sight ones, so only the player will see their, uh, all three of their bars, where the other players will only see their health. Because, theoretically, the reason why a health bar would be uh, represented is because it's a way to track kind of how worse for where the character or the enemy or what have you is looking, just kind of at a glance. Uh, to just give a general assessment of, like, that thing looks, you know, half dead. <laughs> more or less, uh, or close to becoming incapacitated, you know. It's it's just a general gauge of that sort of thing. If you feel like you can very much uh, thematically convey, like, say the, the radiance around your paladin is starting to dwindle the lower they, lower, the lower they get on their lay, lay on hands, um, stuff like that, if you feel like there would be thematic visual indicators of those sorts of things, cool. Uh, you also might not care that much, and you just want the video game information to be displayed for everybody. Um, but generally, without making things too complicated, I think it is just a good way to go about things, to think of what class resources are the most important. And generally, you can usually pare it down to just one. A lot of the characters that have three here, uh, with the exception of these uh, bards, I think, um... A lot of them, they really only have the one class resource, so you really only need the second bar. Um, and that can make things a lot easier to really think about. Like, you only have to think about one resource, like the integral uh, resource that would be beneficial for other people to be able to keep any amount of a track on. Um, like sorcery points, key points, uh, lay on hands, are, those are the biggest ones. Uh, for the clerics, you know, they got their, their channel of divinity, their 202. Um, that can definitely be nice for other people to know, depending on what their cleric domain is. Uh, I believe the life domain one lets them get bigger heals, so that definitely would be something that the other party members would want to know. So, th these are some examples of some characters that all have all their stuff set up. Um, there's also, I have done it with a couple creatures, uh, let's see if we can find the creature in question, let's see, void spawn, or is it arcane, yes, yeah, a lot of these are very heavily reworked creatures, this, this thing, whatever the hell this is, uh, used to be a spine devil. Um, still has a lot of similar abilities. It has limited spines. It's still in there has tail spines. Uh, they're just general spines. Uh, some of their other moves got switched around, but I kept the damage types the same. But more importantly, um, one of the things I did was giving it an actual bar to represent how many spines it has. Um, and it even attaches to a class resource. And how I did that was I actually took this guy, made them not an NPC anymore, and I gave them a class resource, which, now that I fill it out in here, that fills up. Simil similarly with their health. Uh, this is some tech, <laughs> actually, to do stuff like this. Um, there are some other weird things that you can do uh, turning an NPC into a character sheet briefly, um, but this can get complicated, it might be able to screw some things up, 
So, uh, do so cautiously, I suppose. So let's turn them back into an NPC, because they are a creature, they are an enemy to be defeated. Um, but rather than trying to fiddle with this angel that just was not listening, uh, just looking at this, I think, is a good indication of kind of what you can do with an enemy that exists. Uh, it wasn't finicky to work with, because Spine Devils, I believe, are another creature that just, for no particular reason, not in the SRD, so not on here. Um, but again, that's what 5e tools is for. Creatures that aren't in the manual, uh, or aren't on the compendium, uh, that you want to include in your Roll20 games and everything. So, I believe that that will be that. Let's get this stupid voice spray out of here. You're not a player character. Um, so yeah, we went over some dynamic lighting, we made a few different kinds of creatures, uh, apologies for some of the weird technical stuff with Roll20 not wanting to cooperate, and of course with my internet dying, um, that definitely put quite a wrench in things, but, uh, I think that that should give you a pretty good handle on some of the stuff you can do, uh, just real quick, we'll go back into the, the gear zone of the character sheet. Um, really, this column, this general options column, is probably the most relevant one to any old character, especially the global modifiers thing. Um, there's also stuff in here. This is important for rogues, and I believe also bards, where you can switch their... Uh, proficiencies to expertise. And what that does, so let's say uh, Amiop has expertise in acrobatics for some reason. Uh, you go over to core, you look at your acrobatics, that'll add uh, your proficiency modifier twice when you select it. Um, so that's just a feature that some classes have and there is support for it on here. Uh, there's also stuff like uh, initial style. If they have a some sort of debuff that gives them a disadvantage or some kind of item that gives them advantage on their initiative, you can set it so they roll uh, an additional uh, initiative whenever they roll. There's also, of course, the add dex tiebreaker to initiative. Let's not forget to select that. Uh, there's also armor class tracking. So this is something that's important for your barbarians and your monks. So you can do custom. Custom AC, do 10 plus whatever plus whatever. Uh, allow shields, that sort of thing. So say they're a barbarian. Um, you know, you do uh, dexterity, no, dexterity, and constitution. Um, and that is their AC. So if you go over here, uh, well, they have leather armor on, so actually, never mind. <laughs> I forgot that I gave them armor. Yeah, so this is what happens if you have AC... Or, uh, if you have armor equipped, armor in there, um, yeah. Unequipping it, that, that solves a problem. But putting it back on, you get this error message. So, you go back over here, and, uh, you, you don't use that. And then everything will be fine. Um. Huh. I don't know what's up with that. There's nothing there. But anyway, um... There's some other stuff like here. This is very specific uh, stuff like here, like, you know, Arcane Fighter, Arcane Rogue. These are different um, spellcaster types that will change your spell slots because they're specific to those archetypes. Um, and then there's multi-class options here. Again, seldom comes up. Uh, global saving throw modifier, saving throw bonuses. Different things can affect this. You can worry about that when you gotta worry about that. Uh, this, again, also, um, you seldom have to worry about this. Uh, yeah, so, I think that covers a lot of the, uh, not quite basics, but intermediates of Roll20 mumbo jumbo. Um, if there are any other questions, feel free to let me know, and I can record more rambling and screwing around with things. 
Uh, hopefully, in the future, things are a bit less meandering and and long-winded. <laughs> uh, but you know, comes with comes with the territory of trying things out for the first time. So that's gonna be it for now. And I'm just gonna remind you to stay skeletal. <laughs>